The Cursed Painting I had always been fascinated by art, an appreciation that bordered on obsession. In the attic of my late great-grandmother's house, covered by a layer of dust and time, I found it, a painting. An eerie portrait of a woman in a crimson dress, her eyes were disconcertingly lifelike, her gaze hauntingly vacant, as if hiding an unspeakable secret. My curiosity piqued. I took the canvas home, intending to restore it. That night, I hung the painting on the wall of my study. The room, once my haven, now seemed colder, filled with an almost palpable tension. The woman's eyes seemed to follow me wherever I moved, her grim gaze hard to escape. I laughed it off, attributing it to the late hour and my overactive imagination. Sleep that night was elusive. I tossed and turned, haunted by dreams of the woman in the painting. She was no longer confined to the canvas, but roamed freely, her footsteps echoing in the eerie silence, her crimson dress leaving a trail of color in her wake. Each dream ended the same way, her cold, lifeless eyes locking with mine an inaudible whisper escaping her lips. Days turned into weeks. The dreams persisted, each one more terrifying than the last. I was not alone anymore. The woman in the portrait had made sure of that. Each day I could feel her presence growing stronger. The lights would flicker, the room would grow cold, the painting itself would appear to change. Her expression growing more defined, more threatening. It wasn't until I found the diary hidden within the depths of the attic that I discovered the truth. The art piece was the work of my great-great-grandfather, a tormented artist who had lost his beloved wife. Driven mad by grief, he had committed his life to recreating her image, pouring all his sorrow and torment onto the canvas. It was said the painting was cursed, containing his anguish and his wife's trapped soul. I realized the chilling truth. I was not just the owner of the painting, but the custodian of a centuries-old curse. Desperate, I tried to remove the portrait from the wall, but it clung stubbornly. Each tug, each attempt to free my home of this haunting presence was met with an eerie silence, and the woman's eyes glaring more maliciously. Late one night, sleep-deprived and desperate, I took a knife to the painting. As the blade tore through the canvas, an ear-piercing wail filled the room. The temperature plummeted, my breath fogging in the freezing air. I fell back in fear, the room plunging into darkness. When the lights flickered back, the painting was whole again, untouched. But now, the woman in the crimson dress was smiling, an icy, cruel smile that sent shivers down my spine. I live in fear now, a prisoner in my own home. The days are filled with dread and the nights with terror. There's no escape from the woman in the painting. Her chilling gaze follows me wherever I go, her icy smile a constant reminder of my grave mistake. I'm trapped in this curse, forever bound to the woman, my life consumed by her haunting presence. Every night I hear her whisper, a soundless echo that reverberates around the room, you are mine. And so I remain, trapped by the curse of the painting. As I pen down my chilling experience, I can't help but wonder, is this my destiny or my punishment? For in the end, aren't we all but prisoners to our obsessions? Regenerate Resp.